everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Shelly Geigel with JNS Hobbies and Crafts and today's tutorial is on how to make the Stamperia Winter Valley notebook. Now I used one 12 by 12 paper pack to make one, two, I got three notebooks and some cards here and then there was some leftover panels and pieces so that I can back it onto some solid colored cardstock to finish up my Christmas cards. So in this tutorial, we'll be cutting for this one, and I'm gonna show you what I have here to give you some inspiration. Finish size after wrapping is about five and five eighths by eight and a half. And this came out super cute. And what it is, is a notebook. So there's a pocket here, and you can place sticky notes, note cards, whatever you'd like. There is a place here for to hold your pencil or your pen. And then there is the 5x8 notepad that is removable and when you're done with this you can insert another one. And these just slide in real easy. Just right back on in. So that's what we're going to be making today. I also made this one and I do have stickles all over these so they kind of shimmer. Same idea. Now the third one I will tell you is that it is scrapped together. Scrap pieces around the edges. I used one of the panels. Scrap back here. And the only tip I wanna give you is that if you're gonna do that for a third one, is reserve one full sheet so that you can have a continuous piece that is 12 inches wide to place on the inside. And then, of course, some cards I made. Really cute. And this one was scrapped together. And I got some stickles on there. All right, let's move on into the materials list. Let's review the materials list for the Winter Valley notebook you're going to want one of the Stamperia Romantic Collection's Winter Valley paper packs. And this is the 12 by 12 size. One piece of 12 by 12 medium weight chipboard. I'm using the American Crafts white 80 pound 12 by 12 cardstock. You're going to want about six inch piece of say white 1 8 width ribbon or any color that you want. I'm using stickles and you can use stardust or you can use diamond. Some 3 8 score tape or quarter inch, whatever you prefer. And I am using the Art Glitter Dries Clear Designer Glue and you'll want to make sure to get that metal tip. And for inside your notebook, you're going to want a 5 by 8 notepad. And you don't have to, this is, uh, I bought a whole bunch of them, um, the Amazon Basics, but I think the dollar store has these too. And if you go to the dollar store and you see that it maybe has a, a color that doesn't match your paper, maybe it's a bright orange or neon or whatever, don't worry about that because you can cover that with our decorated paper. Last thing is Tyvek. You're going to need Tyvek, and Tyvek's just a material that is hard to tear, and we use that in our binding. Supplies that you're gonna need is a paper cutter, scoring board, scissors, pencil and an eraser, your bone folder scoring tool, craft knife is handy, and a ruler. Let's get started. We're gonna review our pre-cuts for the base notebook. So let's start off here. We had two pieces that were five and a half by eight and a half, and this is our chipboard covers. We had a one inch, I think you can see that, one inch by eight and a half, and that's our chipboard spine. We had two pieces of Tyvek, one inch by eight and a half. We had two pieces that were seven and five eighths by ten and a half, and we labeled that notebook wrap. We had a six and three eighths by seven and seven eighths and we called it a large pocket. And what we did on our scoring board is we laid this down so we are six and three eighths across. We scored at a half, five eighths, 
five and three quarter, and five and seven eighths. Then the instructions on the PDF of the pre-cut said, we're gonna turn it now. So now we're gonna be laying at seven and seven eighths across. We're gonna score at a half and five eighths. And this is our large pocket. We had a four by six and a half. We called it a small pocket. We laid this on our scoring board. We are four inches across. We scored at a half and five eighths. We then turn this, so now we're sitting at six and a half across. We scored at a half, five eighths, five and seven eighths, and six inches. And that's our small pocket. So we're first what we're gonna do is assemble this notebook, and then you will also notice I gave you on the pre-cutting guide for your decorated paper in case you wanna do your own, but I gave you pieces. Um, what sizes to cut for what, and it's labeled here. Um, I'll be showing you how I'm cutting my paper in case you want some help with that. We're gonna assemble the base notebook right now. So grab your seven and five eighths by 10 and a half pieces, your notebook wraps, and we are 10 and a half inch long. On one of your pieces, grab your score tape and bring it to the side without going over all the way down. Let's give that a good burnishing. Next, what we're gonna do is remove the score tape backing. And we're gonna overlap over that score tape. There we go. And we'll give that a good burnish. The next thing that we wanna get after is our five and a half by eight and a half chipboard cover and our chipboard spine. So I'm gonna move this out of the way. Grab your score tape, and we're going to run a piece down that spine on each side. I think that'll be plenty for the spine. Next, on both of your covers, we're gonna put score tape around the outside like a picture frame. And I'll show you mine as soon as I'm done here. All right, so I have my two pieces here. We're gonna go one down the middle on each one. And then we're gonna do one on each side of that, on each piece. Let's go ahead and give this a good burnish. I have all my pieces burnished. Let's grab our notebook wrap. And the first piece that we're gonna lay is that chipboard spine. So I'm gonna remove the score tape backing. And what you wanna do with this is see where your seam is. We wanna center that over there. Now when we do that, we wanna leave about an inch of our white cardstock down here and up here. So we'll just try to get that on as straight as we can. Next, we're gonna remove the score tape backing off our chipboard pieces. And once we do that, we're gonna place one on each side, but we're gonna leave ourselves about a quarter inch spacing between those spines. So let me get my score tape backing off and we'll place these. I have the score tape backing off both my pieces. So the idea is to leave that quarter inch spacing in between, but most important too, is you wanna line up the bottom of this chipboard with the bottom of your spine to help you get this on straight. There we go. And I'm gonna do it over here as well. And if you get this on a little crooked, that's okay. Don't worry about it. There we go. Next, let's grab our tie back. We're gonna lay a piece of score tape on each side of these pieces. Now, if your tie back gets wrinkled up or unruly while you are placing your score tape, don't worry about it. This does get covered and when we place it, we'll be burnishing and we can iron that out anyway. If you have a seam through the middle of maybe yours, don't worry about that either. It isn't gonna come apart. 
All right, let's give this a good burnish. And then what I'm gonna do is remove the score tape backing. So on each of these Tyvex, what we wanna do is lay this equally over our spacing from the bottom to the top. And if you get it on Cricut, that's okay. It gets covered. So there's one. And now I'm gonna place the other one. We're gonna give that a real good burnish. And I'm gonna make an indention where the spacing is so I can see it better. All right, next thing that we want to do is we're gonna place score tape on the edge of the chipboard without going over all the way around, like a picture frame. Once you've done that, what you're gonna to wanna to do is take your score tape and on your white cardstock, you see where the edge of your chipboard kinda meets here? So just come down to the bottom edge. You don't have to go past the chipboard because we will end up cutting this at an angle for a wrap. So when I get over here, even with the edge, I'll just tear off. So we're gonna do that here, here, and here. And you may end up with a little more um, cardstock on one side, and that's perfectly okay. If you'd like to trim this down so you only have an inch there, you can. Once you have it down, let's give that a good burnish. All right, so now what we're gonna do is be clipping at an angle. If you are new to this, what you're looking for is the corner of your chipboard. You'll wanna measure out about 1 8 You can make a pencil mark. Or you can just eyeball this, but you're just gonna cut at an angle and leave that about 1 8 inch spacing. Now what we're gonna do is work the sides. So you see where your long edge is, where you can see where that seam is? Well, we're just gonna kinda of little by little, not all at once, just kinda of fold our paper. So about three passes, I would say. And we'll do the other side, starting with where that seam is. And we'll do it over on the short sides too. All right, let's remove all the score tape backing off our piece. I have all the score tape backing off and the side we're gonna work with is the longest side. So we'll just start where that seam is and we will press this over. And then we can give this a good burnish. Now sometimes when you're wrapping, you will where that seam is get shards or splintering. I will show you how to fix that. Once we're all done here, getting this notebook, the base of it done. We're gonna do the same with the other long side. And we'll do a little burnish. Okay, now grab your bone folder. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is place a hand on your chipboard and a finger over on this flap. Place your tool up here and like you're going around a corner. And what that's gonna do is tuck in. And it helps eliminate really pokey corners. So I'm gonna bring this up. You can see how that kind of tucked that in. Then we're gonna do the same down here. Just kind of go around the corner. This way is very awkward for me. And once you have that, now you can go ahead and fold this over. And then we're gonna give that a good burnish. And you can use your tool to press down any bulk you might have. So when you're done, your corner should look something like this. It isn't so sharp. I'm gonna flip this round and do the same thing. Hand here on the flap and go around that corner. And up here, down here I should say. Whoops, I got crazy. Like I said, that down there is harder for me. Now I'm gonna fold this over. And we're gonna burnish. All right, so we have this. We are not gonna fold yet. On the pre-cutting and scoring guide, I also gave you 
the measurements for your decorative paper in case you're not using the same or you want to do something different. But the first one we're going to get after is an 8 and 1 8 by 12 inch piece and it's going to be our inside cover in here. So like on this one, the inside cover, as you can see, will run all the way across. I'm going to take this out. This is refillable, remember. But you, you want to make sure that you know that anything that's going to be on this side is going to get covered with your pocket. And then, of course, there'll be a pocket down there. So I am going to use something that's more of a, of a print like this. And, of course, I did show this, too. This was leftovers from when I did this. I just made a real nice flat Christmas card with the leftover scraps from doing that one. So, in here, we're going to get after this piece. And I have all my leftover scraps from when I was working with this paper. So, I'll just, I'll go this way. So I'm going to stick it in here because it's the other side I want, but I want to see what I'm cutting here. So I'll put that in my reserves. That's 8 and 1 8, and I'm 12 inches. Now, if you do want to use this side, you can, but do know that this is going to fall here and here. And when we get that pocket on, you will be able to see some of this, but this is going to get covered. Why don't we just go ahead and do that and see how to work with something like that. We'll, we'll use this side up. So if I'm going to put score tape on this side, what I want you to do, because there's key places we have to put score tape right next to each other. So grab this and just lay this down. Now when you lay it down, make sure you're centered side to side. All we're looking for right now is where those spaces are. See our tie back? So I know that over, I'll use tie back as my guide. I'm going to make a long pencil mark on each side. So I know inside of here I'm going to need to make sure I get all score tape and then I'm going to also place an extra one on each side. So let's do this together. So first thing we're going to want to do is do score tape all the way around like a picture frame. And that is why I said to bring your little pencil marks longer. Because when I lay it, I can still see it. So let's do this. And if we get any overhang of score tape, we're definitely going to need to trim that off. All right, let's find those pencil marks. So here's mine. I'm going to start on the left side of that, come straight down. And now all I'm going to do is lay score tape side by side until I get over to the other side. All right, so I have all of that down. Now, in between this and this, I'm going to put one piece. And then in between, I'm just going to lay a piece there on each side. So same thing over here. Down the middle, I'm going to give this a good burnishing to make sure all that tape is down. I'm going to remove my score tape backing. I have all the score tape backing off. Now along the bottom, what I like to do, because this is such a big piece, is I like to squirt a little glue down here, because that's generally where I start when I place something. So right down here, that way it gives me some wiggle room. So again, centered side to side as best you can. And we'll see how that goes. If you're off, that's okay. If it's a little crooked, that's okay. Especially because after we're done putting this together, what you can do if you're crooked up here is you can get a thin strip of your decorative paper and lay it across and that will eliminate any unevenness that you may see. So there's always ways to fix things. So concentrate a lot now on that middle spine area. I think I got mine pretty good. So the next thing we're going to do now is we'll place a hand on the spine, slip one underneath and slowly 
start to bend. Now, how far you go is place a hand, have it upright, and when it hits there, you're done. This is going to be stiff to start, okay? And we'll do the other side. Just like anything that's new, it's going to be stiff. So right now, your book's probably going to fling out like this, but over time, what's going to happen is it will settle down, okay? You can also do ribbon here and to keep it closed. Here's an example of this. I've had this for years, and I use it. And what I use it for is to write down my notes when I'm doing tutorials. But as you can see, it lays nicely now, how it's supposed to. All right, so we have that. That's our inside. We're going to close it. So here's our front, and the opening would be over here. If you are wanting a ribbon closure of any type, now is the time to place your ribbon here on the front and then on the back. I am not going to be using any ribbon because after a while, like I said, this does get looser. Now one thing you can do is gently kind of push a little like this and push a little back. Not a lot, you'll tear out your sides. But you can to work it a little, okay? All right, we're working on the outside covers and I want to use this. So I'm going to need two pieces that are five and a half by eight and three eighths. Now, what I want to do is get, I can use the tree up front and then I can add stuff here. I can use the rabbit and the deer. And I think that's what I'm going to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut this at eight and three eighths. So my blade's over here, so I'm gonna be measuring over eight and three eighths and cut it. So eight and three eighths. This I'm gonna put in my scrap pile or reserves. Now one thing is, is when you're doing your own and you're trying to fit things is we know that the front needs to be five and a half inches wide. And what you can do is kind of put your ruler down and say, okay, so I want to make sure the bunny gets on there. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to make a pencil mark where the right side, and I can always trim off this to help that out. And then there'll be enough over here too. So I'm going to do that. And I'll just trim a little off. So now all I need to do is measure over five and a half, and hopefully that'll give me what I'm looking for. So there's five and a half. And this is my cover, and I think that is absolutely adorable. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure over five and a half and cut that. And then I'll have the tree on the back. If you want to use glue on the front, you can. The idea is to center it in there to give you a white border. Now one thing you can do is if you have any ink or whatever and you'd like to just sharpen up those edges maybe with a different color or distress, you can do that. So now that I've started this, I better finish that. So, And all I'm using right now is the Tim Holtz Distress Ink Vintage Frodo. And all I'm doing is going around the edges. I'm not kind of going like that. I'm just kind of giving it a little color to frame this piece. And you don't have to by any means. All right, I'm gonna flip mine over. I'm a score tape type of gal. And I'm going to be using score tape around the outside like a picture frame without going over. One down the middle and one on each side. The reason why I'm going to be doing a series of notebooks with different uh, papers, even though you have the measurements for your decorative paper, some people just like to get some ideas and see the paper in action and then decide whether, okay, I'll go along with her or I'll do something different. But at least you'll have a chance to make one. And once you've made one, it's, it's very easy. All right, I'm going to go ahead and burnish. When I'm completely done making this, then I'm going to do the stickles. All right, here's my cover. And to give me a little wiggle room, I'm just going to put a little glue down here. So, whoops, I 
kind of have something poking up there. I'm not sure how that happened, but here's my front, and I'm going to do the best I can. Centering that side to side, and just kind of going with it. Now I'm just going to open that up. All right, if you have, before I move on, if you have any splintering where your seams are, I'm going to show you how to fix that. As soon as I'm done burnishing here. So if I didn't get any, but if you did, you can see where the shards or splintering is. What you'll want to do is dab a little glue just a little bit under the shard. Then what you'll do is you'll take your finger and rub it over once and tap, tap, and then leave it alone. If you did not get it well enough, let it dry for five minutes, and then you can do it again with the shards. But you'll go in the direction that the, that the paper's supposed to be going, okay? So here's my cover, and I think that came out super cute. Now I'm just gonna rotate that to the back, and I'm gonna do the same thing. Score tape around the outside like a picture frame, one down the middle, one on each side. And I think I'll give this a little ink, just to sharpen it up. All right, now it's time for the spine. I have this leftover paper from when I was cutting. And what we want is a one inch wide by eight and three eighths to cover that outside spine. Now you can just go ahead and measure over an inch and go down. I'm kind of wanting to get the, the flowers though. So what I'm gonna do is kind of put this down, kind of get this centered in there where the one inch is. So it'll help me see where I need to be so I can get this on the spine. Kind of get what I need to get here. That's pretty straight. I'll go here. I'll put that in my reserves. And now I'll measure over an inch. And then I'll put that in my reserve. And now all I'm gonna do is measure over eight and three eighths and cut. Put that over there. Now for this, I'm gonna use glue. It's gonna be much easier. But I'm just gonna center that in between there. I have a little bit of white on the sides of my spine showing. But I will make sure that I, I line this bottom piece up with what I can see over here. And I'm gonna put a little bit of ink on the top and the bottom and just a little bit on the sides here. Now, if you want to lay this out and go ahead and do it that way, you can. Me, I've always found I've had better luck going like this to get it on straight and even. And that looks pretty good. Now I'm just going to burnish and wipe up any glue that might want to seep out. All right, so here's the outside. That looks really good. Let's open it up. Now, one thing is, is we need to get this ribbon down before we do anything. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is, if, if you're gonna be giving out like pencils in there or pens, find your pen. Here's something I do. I usually will hook it on and I will kind of roll it around so I can get a size, okay? Now this is pretty long, but that way I can see where I want that to place. And so I'm going to be gluing these down as well as right on over to the side. That way it's nice and steady on the center of that spine. You can use this type of glue to do it. It's just going to take a little while to adhere down. Or you can use like a fabric tack. I'll go ahead and use this to start me off. So I know I want it right there, so I'm going to be placing some glue. And I'm going to place these little tails and make sure that that's in there, centered. And I'll just keep wiping it, and I'm going to hold my finger down at the edge so that that gets down. Or if I need to add a little more glue, I'll do that. So there's that. Now that I have that, I'm going to place a hand down and slowly take this out and I'm gonna allow that to dry. I'm gonna set that off to the side. 
Let's grab our small pocket. The first thing that we're going to want to do is you will notice there are score lines, two down the sides, and you'll want to situate this to where you have two along the bottom. Now on the inside score line of that double score line there, you're going to cut up to the top score line, and then you'll just cut over on those score lines. And we're going to do the same over here, the inside up to the top score line on the side. So that's what you should have. Now we're going to fold on those score lines, both of them. And we're just folding one way and that's towards us. Alright, so what you want to do now is you're going to push it in until it makes a spacing like this on each side, okay? And on this one, down here tucks right on into that spacing that we have down there. So it just comes right up. So when you're gluing this down, down under here in the corner, the side of the bottom will go to the side of this. So I'm going to bring this up, and I'll dab a little glue right in here, and I'll come over here and dab a little glue over here, and I'll first get this one steady, and I'll pinch it, and then I can get this one steady, and I'm going to hold it. There we go. So there's our pocket. This is the opening, this is the bottom. So what we're going to do is we are going to place some glue on these little flaps. Get in the corner there. I got crazy. Okay, we're going to bring it down until it's at the bottom of your decorated paper over here and over to the side. And it will cover your decorated paper. It'll still leave you your spacing. We just want to get that on straight. And then what you can do is slide your tool in there and kind of make sure that it kind of burnishes a little bit. If you'd rather go like this, you can. It'll pop back out. So I'm just going to do that. And then I can pop it back out. So, so the next thing that we are going to get after, I know it says large pocket cover on the PDF, but one down is our small pocket cover, and we need a three and a quarter by five inch piece. And I'm going to go ahead and try to get that over here. So what I'll do is I'll, from this side over, I'll measure over five inches to start. So now I have this. And now for this way, I need a three and a quarter. So I'll measure over three and a quarter and cut. Now if you'd like to have that side you can, but all I'm going to do here is center this. And I'm going to center it side to side. That's going to give me a white part of the cardstock and it's going to give me a white lip up here. I'm going to go ahead and glue that down with some glue. And these are awesome as gifts. I mean, I have used mine over and over. It's lost a lot of its bulkier flowers because I use this daily. And I also have other ones I use daily on my office desk and on my personal down by the kitchen. All right, so that's what we have. Let's grab our large pocket. And we're going to do the same thing. Your score lines should be off to the right and across the bottom. On the inside score lines, we're going to cut up to the top one and over. Inside score line, up to the top and over. Now we're going to fold. Okay, we're going to push in the sides until we have that spacing we need. And we're going to hold up the bottom. And we're going to look to make sure everything's where it should be. And now we're going to add our glue and we're going to do the same thing we did before. And I'm going to pinch and hold it down there until it's glued. Alright, that looks like it's good enough there. 
The opening is up here, of course, because that's where our notebook, our little notepad is gonna go in there. Same thing with this. We're gonna bring the side of this all the way over to cover our decorated paper and bring it down to the bottom. So let's get glue. And we're gonna make sure that this is straight. And then down here. All right, let's get our paper for the large pocket and we need a five by seven and one eighth. So we need a five inch wide by seven and one eighth tall. So I have some leftovers from when I used, um, when I was making uh, the other notebooks and my cards. And this is something that I had and I think this is five inches maybe. Right on, it is. So I'm going to go ahead, this is five, and then I'm going to cut it at seven and one eighth. All right, I'm going to apply glue to this side, and I am going to center that side to side. I'm going to leave me a white lip up here. I'm going to get that down. You'll be able to find this paper if you want to do the same in your paper pack. Now one thing I did do was this. I cut this out from the cut apart sheet. And you can see I left a little blue around there and I'm just gonna stick that right there. Whatever side, they're both the same. One says happy holidays and one is just that. And I'll have the happy holidays up. I was gonna use this on a card but there's so many that I can just use it right here. Now for right here, I like to use trimmings. And this is a trimming, it's real narrow, probably about a quarter inch. And I'm just going to place that right across here. I'll snip it and glue it down. It just gives it a little more, you know, something. So there's that. The last piece that we needed was a two by five inch piece. And that is the piece that's gonna wrap over here. So I'm gonna be looking in my reserves for something that I can use. And I'm gonna be using this. It's a cutting off of this. So I'll just measure over five inches. All right, and this is almost uh, two inches. It's about two inches, let's see. It's about one and seven eighths and I'm gonna use it. This is a piece you're gonna to wanna to use score tape on. So if you wanna get some of that on there, I think I'll have some of the greenery on here. So I'll put score tape on this side. So I am just gonna go all the way around like a picture frame. All right, now fill this in. And you will wanna probably use score tape unless you're really good with the glue. Um, but score tape's gonna grab faster, less headaches. I have a little bit left, I'll overlap where I need it. And you'll soon find out why. So now all I'm gonna do is remove the score tape backing. All right, here we go. So here is the front of my notepad. I'm gonna bring this down. It should go side to side. And I'm gonna place it like this. Then what I'm gonna do is, you see how it's already grabbed? I'm gonna bend it over. And then I'm gonna bend it over this way to the back. And we'll burnish now. That is why I like to use score tape because I don't have to hold it in place and I get a good bend. So now the back part slides in here and there is our notepad. And I actually have a blue pencil that will work. Just slide that in there. Now one thing I want to do is add a little bit more. See the tree? I'm going to cut out and round that. You can do the fox and whatever. All I'm planning to do is cut out and around that. And I am going to back it to some white cardstock to make it thicker. But then that tree is going to stand right here. And I have a part of a house here. And I have some fencing. I think it'll look really good. And you can also cut out other pieces and layer in there if you'd like. So I'm going to get after the tree. I'm not going to be too persnickety about how I cut out and around once I get this out. 
So I just got done cutting mine out. It wasn't too hard. Now I'm going to glue this down to some white cardstock just to stiffen this up. Now if you want to ink around your edges, you can. I'm just going to go really quick. I'm not. I'm just kind of flicking my thing there. And you can do whatever ink you want or just leave it out. It's going to look good. And this is going to stiffen this up. Now when I cut this out, I am going to cut it out and leave about a sixteenth of white border to help bring that forward. So as soon as I'm done, I will show you what I came up with. Here is my tree. I'm going to give it a little bend and I'm just going to stick it right there. And I'm going to glue this all the way down. And I'll wipe up any glue, but I think that'll look good. And I think I'm going to grab, uh, let's see, Merry Christmas. If you don't want to put that and you want to put something else, go ahead. I am not going to back this with anything. I'm just going to glue that down right here. Alrighty, so if you want to go ahead and add uh, stickles now to inside, you can, or you can go on the outside with me right now. When I do stickles, all I'm going to do is put it on some of the tree, outline, maybe Merry Christmas, and you don't need a whole lot of this. Just outline, maybe dot for some of the snow or the snowflakes. Let's go to the outside. I'm going to outline the deer, and again, you don't need a whole lot, and I'm just going to be outlining a whole bunch of different items, and I'm going to show you as soon as I am done. So that's pretty boring to sit there and watch me. So I just added a little teeny bit, and I'll show you. Outline the house, put some dots, the trees, and as you can see, look how pretty that is. Now you can also add different things from your cut aparts in there. You can put greetings, blessing, you can use any of these, merry and bright, anything that you'd like in there. On my other one, I just cut a piece of white cardstock, cut out the circle, and mounted it on there. Here's letters for Santa. Here's, I cut out letters for Santa, and I am not good at cutting ovals, that's for sure. I'm just going to go around with this, some ink or something. People and you put can, that right here, letters for Santa. Now my stickles are still wet and uh, it'll be fine because it'll glue down anyway. You can do up here if you'd rather. I'm just going to go right here. I'll add some stickles. So you can just keep adding and layering and do whatever you want. So I added some to this and it looks really good. On the inside, so as that dries, I'll do that to this as well. And then I'll let that dry. My cover is still wet. I want to thank you for joining me on this fun notebook tutorial. I hope it gave you some inspiration for what you can do with the paper, with cards, assorting how I used mine for the notebooks, and they are wonderful gifts. I'll be back with another one another Christmas themed notebook tutorial. Happy crafting everyone and again thank you for joining me. Don't forget to subscribe and comment underneath the video. See you.